Hey, everybody. This is Sat Khalsa here, and along with Michaela Hardy, um, who's uh, one of the fourth installment of our little ball of mud. Hello, Michaela. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, you're standing right square in the middle of your shop. What is its name and where is it? So my store is called Monkey Pants and it's located in Little Tokyo, which is in downtown Los Angeles. And um, I think it's important to share with the viewers that Little Tokyo here is one of the oldest long-standing Japanese and Japanese American communities in the United States. So we are in an area that's very rich with history. Um, and it's a great place where people come to enjoy Japanese food, culture, uh, pop culture, and history. We do have some museums in the area. So we are in a really great and lively neighborhood. Your story is just... Uh... It's so amazing. I, I'm, I'm so excited to have you on our show because uh, our little ball of mud is, is about you. <laughs> um, it's about finding your, your path in life and feeling good about it and inspired. And that's you in a nutshell, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. It's true. I, I moved to L.A. about... 13 years ago, and with the intention of working in maybe the costuming or fashion worlds, um, I didn't really know what I would end up doing, but by some very strange strokes of good fortune, I ended up being able to open my store. So um, really, it's by luck that I've been able to build this and stay in LA as long as I have, because it is an expensive city. <laughs> the rents are high. And I don't think without my store, I would have really been able to, you know, dig into it and, and stay here long term. How long have you been there? So my store will turn nine years old uh, this September. Right on. But I've had the business for about 12 years. So we had about a three-year period of just doing online and wholesale distributing other things like that before, before I was able to open the store. Can you describe your product line a little bit for people so they know what kind of things they can get there from you? Yeah. Um, so the products I offer are mostly things that are cute or a little bit quirky, um, I, I like to say my store is for children of all ages because we do have adult customers that, um, that buy things for themselves, but right. I kind of started out as a children's clothing company. I was importing clothes from Japan for my son. Um, I'll show you some examples. They're hanging right next to me, but you know, we get, we get funny little t-shirts lower it just um there you go that was perfect oh like this yeah yeah there you go now it's yeah. better yeah so we get we get all kinds of um cute clothes for kids but we also do licensed character items my favorite is Monchichi. i'm sure a lot of people that are my age you know in their 40s or 30s remember Monchichi. i'll run and grab one Okay, we're recording again. Hello, everybody. Sorry, we had a little break there. Um, Macaulay, you were talking something about a munchie chi and, and your generation. <laughs> yes, so this is munchie chi. It's ah. actually from Japan. Okay. And it, it first was created in 1974, but in the mid 80s, when I was a young child is really probably when it peaked and it was a global sensation. I meet people from all over the world that loved and played with this toy. Um, you know, Mexico, Europe, Philippines, you name it, pretty much anybody from anywhere knows this character. And this is my favorite toy from when I was a kid. I actually have 
a glass house up there on the top shelf that has all my original Manchichis from mid eighties. That you, that you had for that were yours. Yes. Yes. I have my originals up there and um, I'm very passionate about this toy and I go to um, great lengths to bring very unique Manchichis actually from Japan that you cannot find anywhere else in the States. Um, so, so this Manchichi, which is the basic Manchichi, we can easily get this from a U.S. distributor and they're, these cost $28. But we do get some Manchichis that are in costumes with pink fur or blonde fur. And those ones, they start about $50 and go up. And usually we've got like one of each style at a time. So it's definitely an acquired taste, but there are a lot of people that love Manchichi. So this is one of my favorite things that you'll find in the store. You've been, um, you've, been also, you, 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 you've been written up, haven't you? Um, for your store. Did you win some awards? I, I remember. Um, we've been written up a few times by different articles, uh, different publications in LA. Um, the awards that I've gotten have mostly been for community appreciation or participation. We do donate uh, prizes for a lot of family and kid events. So pretty much whenever I'm asked uh, by a local, you know, organization for a prize that we always donate prizes. Um, so yeah, we, we try to give back. And um, I think my store is kind of still, even though we're almost 10 years old, we're kind of in that best kept secrets category because a lot of people know it and like it but then we also get a lot of people that um have never seen it before and they're really excited to share you know so it's a mixed bag but you know i like being low-key so mm -hmm. i'm kind of i think i'm right where i'm comfortable to be as far as notoriety and all that <laughs> um you can hear me again right yeah mm -hmm. I wonder what this means. Anyway, um, it seems to be if I put my hands on this one thing, so I have to be careful and sit with my hands away from everything. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Techie is not my middle name. We're all learning as we go here. <laughs> and so I wanted to talk about what your future plans are for the store. Is there expansion? Is there... Are you, re, you're popular, I can see that. And are you going to expand your, your, your product line or your stores in any way for the future? So the short answer is probably. Um, the long answer is because I'm a mom and I have two kids and a family that I've Pretty much the whole journey, I've been very conscious about keeping a, 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 Balance. a simple mm -hmm. existence. Mm -hmm. um, I know that some companies, when they grow too fast and they open too many locations, they end up shutting them down. And um, this store has grown slowly but steadily, and it has allowed me the lifestyle that I want, which is... Mm -hmm you know, to be at home most of the time. And sometimes during the year, I work more in the store and other times when it's busier, I can afford to work less and be with my kids more. Mm -hmm. But mostly I, I like to travel a little bit. I like to travel maybe once or twice a year, do like an international trip if possible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably, as I get older, you know, less inclined to do big trips mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot, yeah. but, um, right. but having the one store suits me. Uh, but what I will say is that now that we've kind of hit our stride and I, right now I'm looking at working three days a week while I have my coworkers, my staff, you know, they're here the rest of the week, you know, 
And when my daughter gets into daycare full time, then maybe I do have more time on my hands that I could open another store. And so it has been kind of marinating in my mind the past six months, I'd say. Okay. okay. Um, but obviously for me, it has to be the right spot. So, okay. you know, I like being in a place that's lively with, with a lot of foot traffic and um, that sort of thing. So yeah, I, I'm open to it and it's possible, but I'm definitely not of the mind to have many, many locations. That's not really my, I guess that's, it's not my cup of tea, but I'm open to taking it one step at a time. <laughs> um, has the COVID affected you? Oh yeah. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's affected every business in some way. Um, the way that it affected me was we shut down for two months. We had to close for two months here in LA. Um, I closed actually even before the mandate because there just wasn't people out, you know, people just started staying home before they told us to close. So I closed a couple weeks ahead of it just because it wasn't feasible to be open. Um, and at the time we closed, which was March last year, 2020, my daughter was, um, uh, five months old. And so, you know, my plan for last year was that I would work less, stay home with my baby. Uh, and that didn't really happen at all because when it came time to reopen, which was June, none of my employees wanted to go back to work. Everybody was collecting an extra $600 a week here. I don't know if a that week. was nationwide, yeah. but in LA, yeah. an extra 600 a week meant none of my staff wanted to come back to work. So what that meant was I had to reopen the store myself. Um, I was here probably six days a week, which meant the baby was at home with her dad. So I feel like a lot of it wow. fell on her dad more than wow. me, you know, um, so it was a big change of plans and eventually I did get some people back to work. And then I would say finally this summer, you know, May, June was the first time I was able to really take time off. So we did. Um, I went away for a month and my staff, they stayed and kept the store alive while I was gone. But yes. <laughs> Um, and then financially, obviously, all the businesses had setbacks, but I, I was fortunate to receive a few grants, um, and I did receive a small business loan from the um, Small Business Administration. So that was like a big safety net for me was that loan, and that, that allowed me to just kind of exhale <laughs> right. and say, okay, I can afford to wait this out. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then since we've been back in business and open full time, which is since March, we've just seen the traffic building every month has been busier and busier. So we're in a really good place right now. I think those of us in little Tokyo, we're very lucky because it's busy and we have a lot of tourism. There are some areas that haven't recovered as well. So mm. I think we're in good standing now. Um, you know, we're just trying to play it safe, but we are, we are feeling like things are kind of bouncing back. So, right. Okay. So on our little ball of mud where we all live and exist, do you have any message for the people out there? Um, the humans? Yeah, I think I, I heard something on the radio last week, which kind of stuck and, and it was a guy, I can't remember who, but he said, you know, the information is out there. We all know it. We all know what we need to do. We all know what changes need to be made. Mm. Uh, but it's it now it's on an individual level to ask what you can do yourself to, you know, help make our environment better. So day to day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so for me, it's, you know, I did switch to a a Prius a couple of years ago mm -hmm. um, as my daily driver. So mm -hmm. that's a first step. Um, I would like to find out more about solar energy and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel like 
the millionaires and the billionaires in our world should and could do more selfless acts with the resources they've been blessed with. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if I were in that position, you know, I'm a, I'm a giving and generous and sharing person. So, you know, I just feel like there are people out there that could do more to -hmm. help. And those of us regular people, (laughs) we just have to, you know, ask ourselves what we can do realistically in our our daily life to, to help the environment. I think plastic is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, you know, just general industrialization is a problem and it's important for everybody to vote with your dollars, you know, spend your money where it's helpful and not hurtful. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Those are good words for all of us. Go ahead. Say it again. And we're back. Yes. (laughs) Um, These shirts that you see behind me above my head uh, from here all the way over to here. Whoops. Uh, Those are my designs that I made during the shutdown. So when the store was closed for two months because of COVID, I started working with somebody in China to have my designs turned into the shirts that I had imagined for, that I imagined these for a long time. And when I find, when I all of a sudden had no work to go to, I was like, well, I guess I'll do that. So this shirt here, this has a cupid doll. A lot of people like cupies. Cupid dolls um, are very popular. Yeah. So this one is uh, one of the more popular of the five designs. And I'll show you the other one that's really popular. So this one came from a 1950s schoolroom poster (laughs) that said, I think I remember it. (laughs) And there was another poster that said, Fish We Eat. And I actually got both of them. Fish That Eat Us. (laughs) Yeah. I got both of these posters from my son's school and I decided to turn this one into a shirt so this one's really popular as well oh, it that is oh i bet the boys just love that yeah but you know what's funny is a lot of millennials girls ah, mm. are buying these and squeezing into them because they go up to eight years old so <laughs> they can fit a someone with a slight frame um so that's the, and that brand is called hot cheese and the thing that's really kind of cool about hot cheese is that it's a collaboration of sorts with my partner, my boyfriend, uh, Cyril. And he, he designed my logo for me, which he monotyped, which Sot's going to tell you more about later, perhaps. But he monotyped this pretzel for me. That's your logo? Yeah. Ah. And so I turned it into, obviously, the tag. And it says in Japanese, hot, hot nice. cheese. And then we had it turned into a woven label. Oh, for copyright. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, hot cheese is a name that I thought of a long time ago. And I just kind of thought it was funny. Um, but when I met my partner, who's Swiss, I realized that fondue, which is Swiss, is hot cheese. And he took me to a restaurant. Hold on, I'm getting Amber alerts again. He took me to a restaurant once where I had a a pretzel served with hot cheese. And that was when it clicked that, okay, the pretzel is the logo uh, for the name hot cheese. So it's kind of a little ode. Yeah, it fits. And it's kind of like an ode to him in some way that it just kind of, um, what do you call that? Uh, it works synchronistically happened yeah so yeah okay do me do do me one favor yeah pick up your 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 computer and just slowly turn in a circle and show the extent of your entire shop could you do that okay yeah let's do it all right yes And this is a banana that he monotyped for me. (laughs) This is Banana Friend. Banana Friend is really popular too. Okay, we'll go on a little tour, okay? 
Okay. Bear with me. I'll try not to wobble too much. So um, let's see. So here's some of the clothing. And then we get over here, we get into the kind of baby section where we have a lot of baby gifts. Mm -hmm. We have Totoro. A lot of people know Totoro. He's Japanese. He's from a Japanese film. Um, we just got a lot of socks from Japan that are really cute. These are my favorite. They're frogs with stars. Um, so we have a lot of cute socks. Here's Sesame Street, which goes way back to my childhood too. So that's mm -hmm, you know, I mm -hmm. it. Um, Pusheen is very popular. This is Pusheen and she's a, a fat gray cat that <laughs> has a history of breaking the internet. Um, <laughs> so she's really popular. Uh, this is the Monchichi corner over here. And these are the ones I told you that have different costumes and fur and these come from Japan. So nice. these are pretty, pretty unique. Nice. Um, we do have a little bit of Hello Kitty in here because people love Hello Kitty. Um, we can't get away from that. So, and then we sell a lot of pens. We sell lots and lots of pens, like, you know, carrot pens. Oh, and right, are, right, right. These are really popular. These are, let me pick a different color. You can see it better. These are cat pens. And if you <laughs> press on that tail, that's the clicker that's, there on the that's, pen. That makes it, oh, God. Yeah. So we got lots of cute stuff. Um, oh, these cute. are my these are my skateboard decks, which are not for sale. But Peko Chan, she's a Japanese candy girl, and she's one of my favorite. It's kind of like I feel like I can relate to her personality. So um, here's some really cute backpacks we just got. These are from Japan. We also have shark. And, and like we have orca backpacks and whale backpacks. Um, this is the women's socks over here. Green tea, which I really like, matcha. Um, we, sell, we sell like three different books that are really cool. And we sell a lot of copies. Um, Let's Learn Japanese. It's a really great, cute vocabulary book for kids and adults. If you're learning like I am, it's good. Tales of Japan is like more like mythology. Are this you learning to speak Japan, Japanese? Yeah, I'm. I'm still studying. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a school across the street from here called Ofuji, and I've gone a few different sessions. So yes, I'm still learning. Nice. This is a really cool book. I recommend it for anybody who likes art and Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. It's written by a guy, he's, um, he's European, I forgot where he's from, but he went to Japan and he worked for people like Hayao Miyazaki and he worked in um, manga and animes and stuff. And mm -hmm. the, the illustrations in this book, let me just show you an example. Well, it would be really great if I could kind of flip through and show you, but I guess it's too hard. Anyways, Igort is his name. Japanese Notebooks is the book, and it's really cool. Um, and so, yeah, and then we just have other cute stuff. We've got Disney Japan um, headbands, the ears, you know, like what they have at Disney Japan. We have these um, <laughs> more cute stuff, Little these little pouches that have sparkly little eyes and fur. And these are really funny. These are sumo cats blind box <laughs> so you don't really know which one you're getting but you get a fat cat or you get this little guy if you're lucky he's the he's the mystery guy but um yeah we have blind boxes and then more stickers this is a chicken drumstick pencil case which is really cool this is from a company called glady which is from japan some people say gladdy maybe i'm saying it wrong i don't know um, and then we just got these chicken purses. Oh my God, to get one of those for my granddaughter. Fake fur chicken purses. I got to remind and the last Tyla, thing over here, I got to get one of those for um, Brookie, for Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. 
I'll bring one in my suitcase when I come. Okay. Um, And then the last thing over here on this rack are little uh, outfits called Jinbei. And these are from Japan. And this is what Japanese children wear for the summer Obon, for the summer festival. And it's like a little crossover style shirt, kind of like a kimono, but it's casual. Wow, it's cotton. Beautiful. And it's a shirt and it comes with shorts. And we've got a lot of those. Um, a lot of Japanese and Japanese American families here will come and this is they'll, they'll get Jinbei here for the summer because I think we're one of the few people locally that sell them. Um, and then let's not forget behind me, all these posters you see. Mm-hmm. These are really cool posters. They're from Vietnam. I went to Vietnam the first time was about six years ago with our good friend Cliff. Mm-hmm. More on that trip later. But these posters are one thing that I found on that trip and I brought back. And they're they're printed on bamboo paper. You can kind of see that they have like a, a very natural look to the paper. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're in plastic, so maybe it's hard to see, but um these are movie posters from vietnam and we sell a lot of these we have all the miyazaki films we have most of the wes anderson films we have the star wars trilogies and a lot of other random ones in between like mostly 80s kind of cult films that i'm familiar with you know like mm-hmm. beetlejuice edward scissorhands goonies um gremlins that kind of thing so uh, we sell a lot of posters and that's kind of full circle. And then here we are back at the, the counter, the sales counter, uh, which is where I'm usually standing if you come in the store. So that yeah. was per- that was perfect. Oh, yeah, there's one more thing. I missed the rack in the middle. And this is important because I make these dresses here in L.A. So I don't know. I mentioned the shirts that I make, but I do a small amount of production here in L.A. of my own stuff just for the store things I like but these are a little dress that I make that has a Peter Pan collar and we use Japanese fabric so this is a cotton print from Japan you can see it's got strawberries and kitty cats Um, and we've got a lot of this one is one of my favorites it's supposed to look like a Girl Scout uniform yes yes so definitely does rack this whole rack is all my little dresses from the latest production. So yeah, that's the, um, that's, those are the offerings in a nutshell. And we do all have right. some of it online, not all of it, but yeah, there's always more in our store for sure. Amazing. I, I forgot to ask if she had any questions for me because <laughs> um, when we did Amy's show, that's what I did. So she had a question for me. Can you ask it again, please? So, yeah, I was anticipating that Sot was going to ask if I had any questions for him this morning. And I was like, yeah, um, what's your favorite James Bond film? Uh, Me personally? Yeah. Um, I always liked Sean Connery in the role. I thought he was always the best James Bond to Russia with love. Um, it was one of one of those movies, and um, but I I I like Daniel Craig. I think he's done a really bang up job. Uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know. We're moving into another realm of that. And you asked that question because well, I'm a big fan of James Bond movies, but I haven't seen that many, and I kind of pre-gifted myself the the full collection it's really cheap it's you know on amazon <laughs> right so right I, right so i got the full collection a couple of weeks ago and the question has come up like well do we watch them in order which one should we watch and so i thought i would ask you your favorite because maybe that's the one i'll watch next listen <laughs> um i can't thank you enough for being here and being on our show. Um, I'll see you soon because you're yeah. coming here to Phoenix. Yes. And um, tell Milo to hone his cribbage <laughs> skills. Yep. <laughs> and um, we'll see you when we see you. Okay. 
Okay. If, if, if your viewers want to check us out on the interwebs, okay. we are on Instagram at Monkey Pants LA. Um, I just joined TikTok yesterday because the young people told me to do it. So that's also mm -hmm. at Monkey Pants LA. I'm probably going to work on my first video today. So we are out there and online at um, JapaneseMonkeyPants.com. Okay. So thank you for the opportunity. And it's um, fun to talk to you. Thank you, Makayla. On the, on the camera phone. <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on the Zoom. All yeah. right, dear. Thank you.